Hello, this is the final presentation of the Smart Stethoscope by Team 10. This team was led by our project manager, Jose Garcia. Fellow contributors were Aruj Nadim, Tyler Algigi, and Ellie Moffitt, who comprised the software team. And I worked alongside the project manager, Jose Garcia. My name is Eric Gonzalez. This project was sponsored by Harry Calva and Jason Hallstrom of the iSense Institute. When designing the SMART stethoscope, we had a couple of goals we wanted to achieve. Our first and main goal was it for, it for our product to be reliable. We wanted to provide a product that would be able to substitute in-person meeting with healthcare providers and be just of the same quality. Another main goal we wanted to achieve for our product was it to be cost effective. We know how expensive medical equipment could be and we wanted to provide a cost effective product which was just as qualified to perform the same way as it would but at a fraction of the cost. And finally, we wanted our project to be super portable as it's easy to connect with you on the go. Therefore, especially people who are older and need to consistently monitor their heart rate or record any of bodily sounds, they're able to take this device easily wherever they go and not necessarily worry about a large piece of equipment. When beginning this project, we had a couple of requirements that needed to be done in order to complete this application. Our main thing was we needed to read bodily noises from the head, diaphragm, and the microphone interface, as well as send those bodily noises to the application wirelessly. And we needed to make sure we also kept the quality of the audio during transformation. Also, after that, once we were able to successfully transfer all the bodily sounds from the stethoscope to the application, we needed a way to store those uh, audios into the server for each of the recordings, as well as label and mark those recordings and store them in a proper manner in the database. Aside from that, we also needed to go ahead and retrieve those audios and be able to listen to them and access them through our application as well. So once we went ahead and did that, we also needed to have a separate interface in which we could log into the app as a patient, have a separate interface in which we can log into the app as a medical practitioner, and then also the other um, interfaces and views we had in our application went along with an instruction page in which we could guide each patient on where to connect the device and also where to place the device on the body to successfully achieve and I mean successfully receive the desired sounds. Project design. The following slide documents our project's design. As you can see, the project was designed as a hardware software co-op, a cooperation between a hardware team and a software team. The hardware team was composed of a computer engineer major as well as a computer science major. And the software team was composed primarily of software computer science majors. The project design features a low cost design. One of the main project requirements was that this project be designed on a very slim budget. <clears throat> We're happy to say that we designed it with that requirement in mind. We designed this project to be a multi-interface smart device, a device which interfaces between the analog input from the Glia stethoscope to the ESP32 which provides the Bluetooth connection to our native application with one of the interfaces between the ESP32 and the Glia stethoscope being an INMP441 microphone. You can see above the block diagram of our project, a use case diagram. We had this diagram in mind as we continue to design and implement our project. That concludes the project design slide. Thank you.
So for the testing of the hardware, we uh, established uh, multiple things. So first of all, and then like you can see the three images, we have the first image is the readings of the um, readings of the audio when uh, it is connected to the Arduino application, and it it it, it will be really very sensitive. So uh, that's why it was enclosed, like you can see in the uh, set of code picture, is very nicely enclosed. So it's um, the outside sound. It's a block and nothing else, no air, no like bumping audio as much, and it only has one way to, towards the stethoscope. So it's very detailed in that. Uh, that in those recordings, you can see the uh, all the readings and how, like for example, the heartbeat, you know, like it will show the the readings. And that's one of the preliminary testing that we did, and that's uh, and when was that testing done? Uh, it's not doesn't, sh doesn't connect to the Bluetooth yet in, that, in the moment, but it did it. The other, and then the picture in the middle is the case of the of it of the ASP32. When uh, it's just creating the this, it's just to make it safer, more comfortable, more user friendly. All the cables are gonna come to the bottom, very nicely put it, and then uh, just uh, connect direct to the telescope and connect to the Bluetooth. Uh, so, uh, so we are, we were able to put plug it in. The picture specifically is blocked the port of the uh, USB, and but it connects to the computer with no issue, and uh, it connects right away. Project implementation. The following slide documents our implementation of the project. From the very beginning, we took the design the constraints and the requirements given to us by our sponsors and began to consider how to best implement them. We all were in agreement that the best implementation would be as follows. We implemented the input device as a GLIA 3D printed open source stethoscope. The input device gave analog signals to a MEMS microphone, which formed an interface between the input and our ESP32. The ESP32 acted as our Bluetooth transmitter, collecting the analog signals and turning them into digital signals that could then be transferred via Bluetooth to our native application. <clears throat> our native application was implemented with primarily React Native. Using React Native, we formed a very user-friendly UI, which could allow users to seamlessly navigate through our application, record, and view recordings. These recordings were stored through Firebase and AWS. This is the totality of our implementation. Thank you. The application end of this project was tested using Expo, which allows the developer to quickly load the app on their phone, read error messages from there, and navigate to the various pages in the same way the user would. This allows for a very fluid testing experience. On the hardware end, the microphone was tested on the Arduino IDE, with sound quality compared with stethoscope sound samples. On this slide, we're going to discuss a little bit about the, the goals accomplished and the not go accomplished. So let's start with the good news. So we were able to transmit uh, transmit and send data uh, through Bluetooth and to, towards the mobile phone and application. The software team did a very good job creating the mobile application with uh, the two types of users, uh, the admin user, which could be the doctor and the just the regular guest, which would be the patient. Uh, those All the information will be saved into the patient record, a patient ID, and the doctor will be able to access it. He's the only one that has access to external users. Uh, the quality audio uh, was improved. Uh, we reduced static, we did reduce the uh, delay. There used to be a delay input, so it would uh, the audio would be cut, so it would, it would sound like this. So it's, uh, so we were able to accomplish that. So, but sadly, we were not, uh, uh, we were not able to accomplish the wirelessly uh, system so we were planning on creating uh, not creating 
uh, plug in a battery. We plugged in the device, uh, acquires a 3.3 volts. We got a 3.7 volt battery, uh, deta like uh, detachable uh, with the with one of the ports. Um, but it uh, sadly the this Lowland 32 we were not able to um, plug in the uh, outside power source. Uh, we did some research on it and there was no clear explanation on why. It's more it was mainly you had to do it uh, like out like outside like uh, you had to do hard wire instead of through the pins instead of the actual port in the back, which is was our plan because it felt a little better which. Uh, that's one uh, another reason why the 3D printed design is more flat, and it had because it's going to have space for the battery section. So that is uh, the discussion so far of the the, the hardware section. Uh, software side, everything work it works good, and uh, yep. Discussion. The following slide I'll be using to discuss my contributions to the project. My name is Eric Gonzalez. I am a computer engineer and I was a part of the hardware team during this project. In this project I worked side by side with Jose Garcia on the implementation of the hardware. At various times Jose and I split and iteratively with a little bit of redundancy built in began implementing the project on our own. We had several designs that we worked through, testing the audio quality as we worked through them, before finally deciding that the ESP32 Lowland Light and the INMP441 were ideal for our implementation. Once we came to that decision, we began working more closely together. At that point, I, along with Jose, made sure to test the new hardware pieces to make sure that they were functional through the Arduino IDE environment. Once we tested those, we began to think about the housing for our parts. We also began to think about how to connect the GLIA stethoscope with the microphone so to make a seamless connection between multiple interfaces. At this point, Jose and I 3D printed a body to house the ESP32. We began rigorously testing the sound quality to make sure that it was up to par with the sample bodily noises that we were collecting from online. Among these things, one of our first achievements was achieving Bluetooth connectivity between the ESP32 and our laptops. After this, we began testing audio and finally we connected all of the interfaces together and made our way to connection, connecting the hardware suite with the software suite. The goal I accomplished for my end of this project is the screens for the provider end of the application. This task was mostly front end, but had to implement back end things like database recall and storage. My three pages implemented were the provider home page, the search page, and the patient view page. The provider home page shows the patient's list and navigates to the patient's page and the search page. The search page lists all the patients and allows addition to the provider home page. The patient view page shows details about the specific patients and contains their audio recordings, which can be reviewed from that page. Alright, so here's our final demo build of the Bluetooth stethoscope. So as you can see here is the stethoscope head which is right next to the microphone. We are using the INMP441. Um, we do have the cables connected there. Um, we are working on getting that closed up and then they will lead through this tube. And on the end, they're connected to the ESP32. And um, right now it is connected to the computer and is running our Bluetooth script. Uh, we will, once the uh, 
Felton is complete, has it running on its own with a standalone battery. So I am now going to show you the code. So here on the left, we have uh, the Arduino IDE up on the screen. Uh, the code is uploaded to the Arduino or the ESP. And right here we have the serial monitor. It says uh, that Bluetooth has worked and that the characteristics are defined. So the characteristics are gonna be um, all the sounds and all the bytes that are reads from the microphone. And then we have the settings of the microphone are set up and that the microphone is ready. So now I'm going to connect and show you what that looks like. So once someone connects to the device, um, it does print out device connected. And now I will show you on the um, software side what that looks like. The software demonstration um, of our Bluetooth stethoscope. And this is our Bluetooth stethoscope companion app. So I'm going to go ahead and log in and show you that process real quick. All right, so now we are on the home screen of the application, and there are two buttons at the top. So we have Connect Stethoscope, which we're going to go ahead and do, and we are going to Bluetooth connect to the stethoscope. And since the, since the ESP is on, you just can't see it, um, it's going to automatically connect to it. All right, and it was super fast because it's the only device available. So that's now that that's connected, uh, we can go to a new recording. All right, and we are going to go do a cardiac exam. Um, the only thing that changes is down here. So now we're going to continue, and it's going to give you four points up here. And uh, we're going to start the recording. We'll just do a test recording. Super simple, nothing really. To finish, and it says recording complete and uploaded. So now I'm going to bring you back to the home screen. And we're going to go to this recording where it's going to start the playback immediately. All right. And as you see here, this is a very temporary screen. So we're going to add in a slider and it's going to show you exactly how far you are along um, your recording. But this is the starting time and this is the ending time. So it's a 21 second recording. And you have a very simple pause and play button. Let's see. I am not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but... All right, and that is our demo presentation of the software app.